Coming up tonight, public health emergency declared for the West. PM congratulates tourism stakeholders at annual gala and police inspectors told to perform. Good evening, I'm Michael Ranomalo. A public health emergency order is now in place for the flood affected areas in the country. The order was issued yesterday by the health ministry after six people were hospitalized with typhoid fever. The development follows a confirmation by health authorities in the Western Division of an outbreak involving 14 confirmed cases of food-related illness. According to the Health Ministry Koromboya Village in the Tawa Medical Subdivision and Naitasi Resettlement in the Mba Medical Subdivision were identified as affected areas. We have actually uh, activated what is in the law from uh, yesterday that we have now uh, declared a public health uh, emergency in those uh, uh, affected uh, communities. Uh, something similar to what we did for the Nanoko, uh, Nanoko medical uh, Nanoko community. So basically it will be a restriction and also the isolation of the, of the villages, eh? of the affected. Eh? So which means that moving into the area and moving out will be regulated, there will be control. Uh, we are now prohibiting all mass gathering uh, of all natures, uh, whether it's for carnival, uh, whether it's uh, for other organized uh, tournaments, uh, mass gathering, uh, even funeral gatherings, uh, for that matter, uh, they will all be they are covered in the prohibition. Eh? Uh, the ultimate aim of this uh, emergency measure is basically to contain the uh, outbreak and also to prevent uh, uh, ongoing transmission. For the two affected areas, eight confirmed cases were registered among villages of Koromboya, while six were recorded from Naita Siri settlement as medical authorities keep a close watch on other communicable diseases and try to contain the outbreak as a result of the flood. So interrupt the transmission, care for those that are affected and uh, manage uh, the community as such. This will be for 30 days and then we will review and then uh, we will uh, you know, take uh, uh, further direction from it. The Prime Minister Vorenge Mbainimarama has congratulated the various tourism stakeholders as he revealed that Fiji continues to be a tourist hotspot. While officially opening the 15th annual Aeon Fiji Excellence Tourism Awards last night, Bainimarama revealed that visitor arrivals have once again broken the record with 675,050 people visiting the country last year. Renowned resort and hotel owners and representatives, along with other various tourism stakeholders, gathered at the Gala Awards evening yesterday. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama, who was the chief guest at the event, highlighted the major developments by tourism stakeholders which have contributed to our economy. The major announcement he made was the increase of 6.8% visitor arrivals compared to 2010 figures. Bainimarama says the record shows that our tourism industry is progressively expanding. The uh, stats also show that our source of markets is uh, steadily diversifying. A testimony that my government's policy to grow our traditional sources but at the same time increase the overall percentage of arrivals from other sources is being achieved. Banimarama urged tourism stakeholders to spread the risk. Spreading our risk involves traversing new grounds, new ways of thinking, and recognizing the need to adapt and provide new and better services. What may have been an excellent service a few years ago is not necessary now. The Ministry of Tourism, Tourism Fiji, and uh, Air Pacific are on this path. And we all need to quickly adapt to these ways. The launch later this year of the new marketing strategy and brand refreshing through Tourism Fiji must be immediately adopted by all. We must do so if we are to remain in the game as serious players, have good deals and take advantage of key initiatives coming to the fore in the short to medium term. He also highlighted that the three new Airbus will be commissioned by Air Pacific next year. 
The first one will be in March and the other two in May and September. The new aircraft will also mean refreshing the brand of the national carrier. It is imperative that the national carrier fleet and operations is modernized and supported by all Fijians because the success of a sustained tourism sector in our island country is dependent on a viable and true national carrier. In addition, the Grand Pacific Hotel is set to open its doors towards the end of next year with a new 600-seat convention center. Bani Marama says this will add a new dimension to the Suva destination with the availability of much-needed convention and room capacity. The new casino resort and its 1,500-seat state of the Art Convention Center, which will be located in Denarau, are set to be opened by October 2013. These developments provide enormous opportunities for Fiji. These opportunities create stronger segmentation and must be managed carefully. It requires collaboration and synergizing all our efforts. For example, the annual 7 million uh, US dollar marketing budget set aside by the developers of the casino must be synchronized. With the recognition of these developments, a new award has been added for marketing. Much has been done and more is expected from you. This was the message delivered to leaders of the Fiji Police Force by the Commissioner of Police Iowane Naivalurua while closing the Leadership Symposium in Nasese yesterday. Speaking to the 109 police officers yesterday, Mr. Naival Ruo was very much concerned with the complaints from members of the public at large and has reiterated to his senior officers that they are the key to all this and they need to be the change agents. After the four day symposium, Mr. Naival Ruo said, Much has been taught, much done, and more is expected from them in their line of duty. Much has been said, much has been done, and a lot is expected out of you. <clears throat> the last few days has been an investment by the Fiji police to its future leaders. It has been an investment. A lot of people, including our very special guest, have stepped forward willingly without any cost to them to help in making sure that the future leaders of Fiji are the ones that can be trusted, trusted by all of Fiji, be able to look after not only Fiji, look after the lives of the people of Fiji, but will be able to conduct their affairs with trust and integrity. Mr. Naval Ruo says the officers must practice proper ethics in order for the force to achieve maximum effectiveness. Naval Ruo further adds leaders must take responsibility and not pass the buck, adding the force must have a militant spirit to get the job done at any cost. When you look at the list of complaints, those are minor, very small, insignificant in some cases but they are complaints they reflect they reflect the views and perception of the people at large and for you and i in the work that we do complaints is a serious matter it's a serious matter and therefore it is our utmost duty to make sure that we bring a resolution to those type of complaints and we're able to give peace and rest to the complainant. The leadership symposium ended yesterday after the officers were given certificates by the head of the Fiji police force and senior staff. Coming up after the break, over 80 confirmed cases of dengue, typhoid and leptospirosis. Man dies from food poisoning in the West and nightclub owners told to be vigilant. <laughs> 